Are we ready to go, Ms. Sinclair? Ready. Okay. Hello, 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 everyone. Good morning to our Boost with Facebook workshop, Getting Creative with Your Mobile Phone. My name is Tulani Sidibe from Digify Africa. I'm the Boost with Facebook trainer there, and I'm not here by myself. I've got my Sinclair, who is our trainer assistant um, and will be assisting me with delivering this workshop today. I know that we are all here to learn about how to get creative with our mobile phone, but there's going to be more to this session. Um, throughout the session, we'll be talking about how to actually plan your creative, right? Uh, before we actually do anything, there's a lot of planning that goes into social media content creation. And that's going to be pretty much the highlight of the session, how to actually plan your content and be able to execute it. Because we're small businesses and we don't have a lot of time to produce content and we don't also have a lot of money as small businesses to be able to produce content at a large scale. But with your mobile phone, you can do all of these things and also save time in the process. So like I said, my name is Tola Nisidibe from Digify Africa, and I'll be leading you through this workshop today. And before we get started, I just wanna share a quick story of a business that has actually used the tools we're going to be sharing with you and how they actually managed to grow their business using just a mobile phone and some creativity. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, so this is a business um, in the United States. Um, and they basically have a distinctive garden business, right? And it's basically a landscape company. And what they basically do is they help people with their gardens, right? So. What happened is that with this business, when they started, they were basically living two hours away from the closest city, right? If you can go to the next slide. And as you can imagine, that takes a lot of time to be able to travel between your customers and where your business is. So they ran an ad on social media to create ads targeting people interested in their gardening service within the certain radius that they could reach. Right. That was the first thing they had to understand where their customers are and how they're going to reach them. And then what is also interesting with their story was is that it was during Christmas. OK, so in America, as you have seen, maybe in movies or in adverts, um, is that when they celebrate Christmas, they have actual Christmas trees that they pick up from um, a nursery and they put it in their homes um, and they decorate them. Right. So this business wanted to run a campaign around about that time so that they could reach businesses in the area who could drive to their business and then collect their tree. And here's how it happened, right? So once they started running the ads, once and again, when let's say it was in weekly terms, right? So if they were lucky enough, someone would come in and buy something and that wasn't good enough in the beginning. So they started putting more money into their ads and targeting their customers better. And they created this ad, right? So if you can just go to that slide, my simply. So you can see how drastically different the first ad was, right? So if you go to the previous one, this was basically the message that they were showcasing, okay? So they had a picture of someone in their shop, okay? My Sinclair can go to the previous one. So this was the first ad that they ran, okay? Um, the one where the lady is standing and they're at the shop. And as you can see there, it wasn't as engaging and it doesn't say much about what this is, right? So at a first glance, you can see that it's a wide um, picture, which is landscape, right? And there's no text on the video, on the picture, and there's basically something very static, right? So this worked for some time, okay? Um, until they then started changing up and switching up their content to see what would happen with their ads. You can go to the next slide. So 
when they started using the tools I'm about to share with you, this was the sort of ad that they then started um, experimenting with to see if they'll get more results, right? And if you can just play the ad, Cynthia. So as you can see, there's different things now happening on the ad and there's text, right? And it doesn't just showcase a tree, okay? So they're still the same business, but how they approach the ad was in a more creative way to celebrate Christmas, right? Cool, can you go to the next slide? So the result was everything was sold out so much that they had to close early that Christmas because they actually sold more um, in a quicker space of time, right? So the concept that they did was to create something called the Tulip Box, right? Which the Tulip Box was basically a reimagined Christmas tree that didn't look like the obvious Christmas tree. It was put it in a glass and it was decorated to resemble a Christmas tree. Okay, which was more visually appealing, which was more interesting to their customers than just having an actual um, Christmas tree. Okay, since I'm gonna ask you to skip to the two next slides. And skip that one as well. Yes. So you may be wondering um, how much it actually cost them to produce that ad, right? Because I did say in the beginning um, that we're trying to not spend a lot of money when we're trying to create this kind of content, okay? Um, can we go to the Mobile Studio slide? Okay, so basically the tools that they use to create that ad are these three simple things. They use the mobile phone, they use a couple of apps, and they had a tripod for their mobile phone. And this does not have to cost you a lot of money. I don't know how many of you have these tools, but I did some research before we came here today just to give an idea of what this sort of package would cost, right? If you buy an entry-level smartphone, right? Um, by the way, I'm not being paid or I'm not endorsing any sort of product. This was just basically in terms of research and how much these things cost, right? So there's a smartphone that you can buy for 2,000 Rand. Um, I saw one yesterday by Nokia. It's got a great camera. It's got all the features that you need to be able to produce content, right? So that phone costs about 2,000 Rand. If you already have a smartphone, that cost is already gone for you. The tripod that can hold a mobile phone and that is actually flexible and you can move around is about 350 Rand, right, for a basic one. You can spend a bit more if you do have more money, but a basic one would be 350 Rand. So basically this would be your mobile studio and you are pretty much done and ready to start producing the same kind of content that this business was able to produce, right? So for the next couple of um, slides, I'm basically going to take you through the techniques, how to plan your content, how to actually choose the apps that you're going to use to produce these kinds of um, content that you can see on the screen, right? Everything you see here has been made with a mobile phone. Okay, so I just want you to take out the complexity and the difficulty of producing content and thinking that you need a big studio, you need those big fancy cameras and you need to pay heavy subscriptions on apps and tools, you don't, right? In the next few slides, you will see how you actually can do this yourself at home. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Okay, so like I said in the beginning, the main thing for you to remember here is that people consume content differently, okay? So you need to plan your content because not everyone, not all your customers consume content the same way. Okay. And not everyone is on a mobile phone. Some people are not on a mobile phone. They're actually looking at content using their laptop. Okay. So you need to think about that consistently when you are producing content. Okay. So I'm going to give you three things, right? That you need to always remember when you are producing content. One, content for mobile 
right? Needs to be frequent, number one. Needs to be fast, number two. And number three, you need to produce it for sound off. Okay, so through research by Facebook and a lot of people, um, they have found that consumption on mobile feed is frequent, fast, and sound off. And what that means is when someone sees content on the screen, right, more often than not, the sound will be off. So if you have a video playing on the screen, okay, it won't have sound unless someone enables sound. So when you're designing your video or thinking about the video and there's a voice over, you need to consider that someone may not hear the voice, so you need to put in a bit of text, okay? The second thing with the speed of the video, right, is that people are flooded with a lot of content, right? So they don't have a lot of time to stop and watch content. So a lot of us actually browse and scroll through a lot of pieces of content until that one thing catches our attention. And it's usually something that has a lot of text or something that's moving very fast that captures our attention in the first 30 seconds. So those are the things that you need to actually think about when you're producing content before you even make the video or make the actual um, slideshow, okay? And something very interesting is that 75% of all data will be video by 2020, right? So this is 2021 and the research is continuing. And if you look at the fastest growing social media platform in the world, TikTok, right? It's a video based platform. Okay. If you look at all the new features on most of the social media platforms, if you look at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, right? They all have stories and stories have videos and pictures. Um, there's reels now, um, there's IGTV. So if you look at the trend of how social media platforms are growing, video is the key in terms of content that people are consuming. Okay, so that's one major thing that you need to think about as you're producing content. Okay, so as we continue now, I want you just to quickly recap on what we've discussed so far, right? One is it doesn't cost a lot of money, right? You need to plan. Number two is that you need to think about your customer and how they're going to consume the content. Number three, video is the primary content that is going to get you the most engagement, right? So now that you know these three things, you need to think about how you're actually going to produce content. Okay, so what is good mobile content? Okay, so good mobile content has a couple of features, okay? First of all, it's visually exciting. It's simple animation. It captures attention early and shows the use of a product in a service in an interesting way. Okay, so these four things are very important to note when you're creating content for mobile, okay? So the first three seconds, like I said, is what will capture people's attention, okay? If something is static and needs to be played before it can be seen, then you won't get as much engagement um, as you would if it was flashing and moving as you can see in the example that we have, okay? The next slide, please. The other factor that makes good mobile content, right, is these four features, okay? It's short, right? It's framed for the screen or the platform, okay? Meaning if it's going to be on Instagram, on the mobile feed, right? It's pretty much going to be a square, like a one-to-one -one ratio, like a perfect square. And if it's going to be on the stories, it's a vertical video, right? So that it's more immersive. And it needs to inspire action. So it needs to say something. It needs to tell the person what to do after they've seen the video, okay? And that has to come in in the first three seconds of the video. And the entire video in itself shouldn't be more than 15 seconds, okay? And it's designed for sound off. So those are the four characteristics to make sure that your video um, or your content rather is built for mobile okay and then if you can go to the next slide the third characteristic of great mobile content is that it is relevant to your audience okay and that's the most important thing because as you can see here the company right is a pretzel company right but it has two different pieces of content if you look on the left and you look at the right okay 
those two images appeal to different audiences. Okay, so one is for the parents, which showcases a child. Okay, and the other is for millennials or let's say a bit more grown up people who then actually buy the product themselves and consume it for themselves. Okay, so the main thing that I need you to pick up here is that with the one on the left, okay, although there's a child in there, they're not advertising to children, they're advertising to parents, okay? So if you know that your audience is primarily parents, okay, then you need to think about how are you going to engage the parents because you can't target 12 year olds um, on Instagram, okay? And on other social media platforms. So you need to think about who your audience is, okay? So those are the three characteristics of what makes good mobile content. Okay, just to recap quickly, it's thumb stumping, okay? Moves very fast, simple animation. Um, essentially, if you can just go back to the first one. Just to recap quickly. Okay, so it's thumb stumping. It's built for mobile, okay? and it's relevant to your audience. Okay, so please, please, please note these three things down and remember them. And now we're going to get to the next section. Okay, now that you've thought about your audience and you've thought about who they are and what kind of content you're going to produce for them and where you're gonna play, um, place your, your, your content, right? The next two things is to plan and actually create your content, okay? So you've done the thinking, you've broken everything down, the next thing now is to start creating your content. And for you to do that, you need to plan. So if you can just go to the next slide. Okay, so without planning, you won't succeed, right? You won't be able to reach any of your goals. So let's see how other brands, right? Um, outside of this guiding brand that we, we looked at actually plan and create mobile content. Okay. so. When you, when you start planning your content, right? There's basically three um, different things that you can think about in um, creating your content, right? So there's three types of um, sort of themes of content that you can consider in your content plan for your business, okay? So these three content pillars is engage, educate, and excite. Okay, so I'm going to talk about engaging content now, right? So the first thing you can do is if you want to engage your audience and talk about your business is you can share the story of how your business got, got started or how you're actually giving back to the community if you are, if you have, if you do run those kinds of programs or show off your business, the actual store, do like a virtual tour of it. Right. And basically what you're doing there is you are raising awareness about your business and you're telling your business story and you're engaging about your business. OK, so if you're a new company, this works well when you are telling your, your story. Um, if you're an existing company and you're only starting to focus on social media now, you can actually start in the beginning of your business and document um, uh, how the business got started and show those kinds of pieces of content. OK. Then the second pillar is educate, okay? So in educating your customers, right? The kinds of content that you can create is talking about your product, talking about your process, okay? Showing the behind the scenes of your business and how actually everything comes to life. Whether it's a product or whether it's a service, you can always just pick up your phone take a video and show people around what's happening in the factory or what's happening in, in, in the studio and then take that piece of content, use the apps that I'm going to show you now, right? And then take that and then create some content, okay? The next pillar of content is Excite, okay? Here, this is when you can announce certain things, okay? You can use this pillar of content to announce when a new product is coming. You can announce events, right? Um, or you can announce um, a promotion that you're going to have. 
And also, this does not have to be your own announcements, right? So depending on the kind of product and service that you have, right, you can always use your community as well to um, create content and announce news. For example, um, if you have a clothing brand, right? Um, I'll use an example of an athletic clothing brand. If you're in, in the athletic space and you make um, cycling tights or shorts, or you make soccer clothes, whatever it is in the athletic space, if there's a new or there's an upcoming sports event, right? You can then, let's say it's the Derby, Chiefs versus Pirates. You can then announce that this game is coming. How are you going to dress for your favorite team and so on and so forth. And you can use that as content, right? Which you can create very easily on your mobile phone to speak to your audience because you understand that your audience is into football, okay? So all of these things, I hope they are coming together now on how you bring in your audience, you think about who they are, and then you use your mobile phone to create content, okay? So the next few sections, we're actually going to look at how to actually create the content, okay? So what you have on the screen is a free template that the guys at Facebook have put together, okay? To help you sort of break down your customer, okay? And once you've filled in this brief template, which Masintla will share the link um, in the chats so that you can access it, it's on the Facebook mobile studio website, okay? You can get this template yourself and then fill it in so that it helps you break down your customer into these five categories. One, how you describe your business to a friend, okay? Where or who are your customers um, and who are they as people? So your primary customer, your secondary customer, who are they as people? I'll show you a full example very soon. And what makes your business stand out, okay? And then also, what do you need to tell them about your business and what is the goal of the ad or the content that you're trying to create? So a full example looks something like this. Um, if you can just, if you have it there, must clear to showcase what it would look like. So for this kind of business, right, which is in the gardening space, how they've defined their business or how they would define it and explain it to a friend is that they are a hip, fun, urban plant shop made for plant lovers, okay? Keywords, hip, fun, right? Urban, okay? So already when you're thinking about your audience, right, you already know who they are and the kinds of things that they're into, okay? If you look at how they broke down their customer, they said it's 20 to 65 year old women living in New York who love interior design and plants, okay? So already when you're creating content and you're thinking about your primary customer, you know that, okay, it's targeted to women of this kind of age and I need to create content that appeals to them in a certain kind of way. Okay, so this is going to be your homework. This is something you're going to um, take home and be able to do and complete it yourself and then use this as a guide, okay, for you to start creating content. Okay, so now we're going to get into the fun stuff, the actual creating of the content, if you can skip that slide. So in these next couple of slides, I'm just going to take you through the creating part of the content, right? So you've planned, you've broken down who your audience is, um, you know what makes your business stand out, you know why they want to come to your business. So now you're going to serve them with the content, right? That they actually can consume and want to consume, okay? So the first thing we're going to start with is choosing the format of the content we are going to create, okay? So depending on whether you're going to have a video or a slideshow or images, you need to think about the format, okay? So if you're going to primarily show your content on IG stories, uh, Facebook um, stories, WhatsApp status, you then need to ask yourself, what is the size of the stories screen, okay? Which then will then help you, okay? And deciding how you're going to build that content. So I'm going to show you three different types of ad formats um, that you have, okay? Which is a slideshow, a video, and a carousel when you're creating content, okay? 
So for a slideshow, you can stitch together multiple photos to create a video, okay? So you're using images, but because we know that video is the medium of content that people consume the most, right? You're going to turn your slideshow, your photos into a video, as you can see with the example. And then the next one is basically a normal video that you can put up, okay? Which you can use any of the apps that we're going to show you in a bit um, and use that as a uh, piece of content. And the format for that is, as you can see, it's a square. So that would go on your Instagram feed or your Facebook feed um, for your different type of audience, depending on who you want to serve this content to. Okay, then you can also use a carousel. So with carousels, customers can scroll through the photos of videos at their own speed. Okay, unlike the slideshow, it's continuously playing. Okay, and the video is also continuously playing. The carousel allows the person to swipe through the photos at their own pace. Okay, and be able to look at the content. And it's actually a smart way also because instead of having one video, you can have four videos, right? In each carousel, right, in each block, you can have a video that the customer will scroll through, watch for a few seconds, and then pause to the next one, watch for a few seconds, which makes it more engaging. And the last one is your Instagram stories. It's very immersive. It covers the entire screen. And it's basically if you want to showcase a product or if you want to showcase something um, and you want to be very, very engaging, you can use your um, Instagram stories as the primary format for your content, okay? So part of choosing the format is thinking about the framing, right? As I was saying that for Instagram stories, it needs to be vertical, okay? So, and that means um, it's a ratio of 16 by nine, okay? So, I mean, sorry, the other way around. So for vertical, which is the one on the far right, right? The ratio for that is nine by 16, okay? So the frame of that is actually the landscape, which is then turned upside down, which then gives you the ratio. And you can find this um, on the apps that we're going to show you now, okay? So don't feel like it's too technical. Um, if you don't know anything about framing, we're actually going to show you how to actually frame it yourself, okay? so. The Instagram video, the square, okay, right? So that also is going to appear in a certain ratio, which we're going to give you later. But this is what you just need to note in terms of framing your video for the different platforms and the different formats that you're going to choose for your content. Okay, so. Now we're going to get into some actual tips on how to create the content, um, to turn your static photo into a video, okay? And how to actually work with color, okay? So we're going to look at contrasting and we're going to look at context, okay? Playing with the product in its context. So Masintle, if you can just go to the next one, just so we can show the examples. Let's just go, back a bit, the creative tips for photo. Yes, there we go. So number one, have a single focal point, all right? In the example that we're showing you now, the nail polish. So the main focal point of this photo, right, is the nail polish. So think about different ways on how you can showcase your product, okay? and create contrast with color, right? So as you can see with that watch, the main thing that creates the contrast is the background color, which is bold, right? And eye-catching, but the hero of the content is the watch. So because the blue is a bit light and there's like some white behind it, right? It stands out and comes to the front. So think about color when you are creating the types of content. And the third example is basically showcasing the product in, in context. So instead of having a simple white background um, of your product, I'm going to show you a couple of tools where you can erase the background and then place the product in context. So place it in um, sort of like Photoshopping it where people can see what it looks like in, um, in actual use. Or you can actually do a photo shoot, right? But here we want to save as much money and time as possible. 
um, today and show you how to do it yourself. Okay, so Masintha, can we go to the making great content slide? Okay, so we're going to now build this content. Okay, so mobile studio, okay, Facebook mobile studio will give you a list of all these apps. Okay, and there's also tutorials and examples that you can look at on how other businesses have done this. Okay, so if you can't keep up in the session um, or you want a list of the apps, we will share the link. But just to get started for today, I'm going to give you a couple of apps um, and tools that you can use to turn photos into video, um, to liven up your photos, um, to do basically a lot of cool stuff. Okay. So the first one we're going to look at is an app called Ripple. Okay. So Ripple allows you to turn photos into video. Okay. So this business here, Bombshell Fitness, was able to use existing photos to advertise the Fit 30 challenge. Okay. So that was done using Ripple. Right. And here's how I'm just going to give you a quick step by step. It's not very difficult, guys. So once you've downloaded the app, right, so you can open the app and then select the photos on your phone. Right. Um, in this example, they've used four photos. OK. And then you can add in your chosen message or copy that you want to highlight. And then there's templates for that. So you can choose a template and then you can adjust the copy and then select the font that you want, which works well with your brand. Okay, and then the great thing also is that you can even add your business logo so that it looks like your actual business. And then you can select what you want to animate. So if there's like a certain part of the ad that you want to animate, you can select it. And then you can save it on your phone and you are good to go, right? Those are the quick steps, like very, very fast. If you've done the planning already, if you have the photos already and you've decided that, okay, in this photo, I'm going to use the lady as the focal point, and then I'm going to have a blue background to contrast and then take that photo. Or you use a stock image, which you can find on, on free platforms. Um, we're gonna try and share those with you as well. You can find a stock image and then you can use it on the app to then edit and then create this kind of content. Okay. So let's say you have an e-commerce website, right? You have an online store um, and you have already existing photos, okay? And now you're trying to bring them back to life instead of creating new content, okay? In the next app, I'm going to show you how you can liven up your photos, okay? So if, like I said, you have an e-commerce website, the reason why I'm using e-commerce as an example is that a lot of the times, the photos that they use have a clear white background, okay? So if your photos also have a clear, uh, clear um, white background, it will actually make this easier, okay? So by using Photoshop Mix, okay, you are able to create this kind of content, okay? So if you see, if you can look at this current photo, right? This you can tell was on e-commerce website, they're selling dresses, right? So now we're going to, take this photo and spice it up, okay? So the name of this business is called Pop-Up Plus and they wanted to showcase the spring collection, okay? So they used existing photos and brought in a splash of spring in their photos by changing the background. So how they did it was using an app called Photoshop Mix, okay? So the first thing that you do when you, after you've downloaded Photoshop Mix, so first thing you download the app, and then once you have the app, right, going to open the app, and then you're going to look for the photos that you have saved on your phone, okay? And then once you're on the app, you'll then be able to cut out the background, okay? So once you, as you can see, you'll be able to cut out the background and then choose the different patterns that you want to use. So you can find these on Pinterest, you can download them on any other platform or you can design them yourself, okay? Then once you've done that, you'll then take that original photo that you have and put it on this background, okay? Which then have these the spring kind of feel for this business specifically. And once you have these photos, okay? You'll then, when you go on back to Facebook um, to upload it, 
or to run it as an ad, you can then put them together as a slideshow. Okay, so that's basically how you can do that. But another quick tip, if you actually have both of these apps, right, which is the one I just showed you now, Ripple and Photoshop Mix, is that you can edit these photos on Photoshop Mix and then take them to Ripple to add those text animations. Okay, but that you will figure out at your own time, at your own pace when you start using these platforms. Okay, so I'm going to show you the next one now. So the next one basically allows you to turn your static photos into motion. Okay, so very, very, very cool example for a clothing brand. Okay, so you can take existing photos that you have on your Instagram already right and you can use an app called uh mojo okay i use this app a lot i really 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 like this app okay so what mojo will do is take those photos and make them into a lightweight video that can be seen on your stories right those immersive full length videos i was talking about earlier and it's a very 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 simple app to use okay so if you can go to the next slide so once you've downloaded the app, okay, you simply just add the photos to the app, okay? And then you will then have different templates to choose from, depending on the kind of promotion that you want to create, okay? And then once you open up the, the photo, essentially if you can go to the next slide. So, to get to that part there, right, you'll then, as I was saying, you'll then open up the app, right? So first thing first, you have to download it. Um, and those asking if you actually have to pay for this app, this app is free, okay? Um, and you download it for free, you can use it for free, but there is a pro version that gives you access to more templates, okay? That's the main thing that you need to think about. Um, if you want to start spending money to look very distinct, then you can yeah, get the premium version, but the standard free version you can also use to create the content um, on the screen as it's shown very, 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 very easy. And once you're done, you can either save it to your phone or you can reuse it on other platforms, okay? So you can, from Mojo, you can share this to Instagram, you can share it to WhatsApp, you can share it to like SMS, you can basically share it to any um, platform where you have customers on. Okay. And the next one is called Unfold. Okay. So Unfold and Mojo are probably the two apps I use a lot personally. Okay. So I use Unfold a lot for stories, right? So when I want to create stories that are very like, okay, I'm going to use a very, very weird example. You know the Woolworths kind of look and feel, right? So I use Unfold and Mojo to get that kind of Woolworths-like look and feel. Um, very clean, uh, very straight to the point, and it sells what you're trying to, to communicate. So you can use Unfold, right, to make horizontal, um, you can take your square photos, right? And then put them onto a vertical video and you can do so much more guys. I'm just gonna show you quickly on how you can actually get started. So once you've downloaded the app, right? You're gonna get different kinds of templates that you can choose from, okay? And then once you've chosen the template, all you basically need to do now is add your photos, okay? Like I said, if you are smart, you'll then combine all these apps use Photoshop Mix to edit and make your content, and then use Unfold for your static photos to be then created into stories that you can upload on your IG or Facebook or WhatsApp. Okay, very, 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 very easy to do. Um, and also Unfold is free. So all you have to do is just download the app. And again, there is a paid version which gives you access to more features, but you can use um, Unfold as it is to get this kind of look and feel without having to spend any money. Okay, so basically those are the apps that you can use. Um, you can just go to the next slide. So I did say I will give you a list of all of this. Okay, so basically your homework for today 
is to go download these apps. Okay, if you just go to the next screen, the list of these apps. So some of them we couldn't cover in the session because of time. So you will have to download them yourself, but you can just take a screenshot of this. Um, or Masintle, like I said earlier, will then share the link to FB Mobile Studio, or you can just Google it yourself. Just go to Facebook Mobile Studio and you will be able to find these apps and download them. Please, please, please use these apps. And the only way for you to get better is to try them out. So if you've never done this before, trust me, it's not very difficult. You just download these apps, look at the examples, and then try it out yourself. And as time goes, you will get better. And this is where we will end the session today on getting creative with your mobile phone. Um, I don't know if we do have time for questions, um, but this is where we will end um, our session today. And if you would like to attend another Boost with Facebook session, please, 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 please go to the Digify Africa Facebook page or the Digify Africa website or any of our social media platforms. We have open sessions that you can attend to learn more. Um, if you want to learn, for example, how to create an advert um, and how to boost a post, we have sessions like that. If you want to know how to use WhatsApp for business, we have sessions like that. Or if you'd like to organize a session like this for your own community, um, you can also do that by contacting us on our website, which is www.digifyafrica.com. Or alternatively, you can go to our Facebook page, send us a DM or Instagram, and someone will reply and will also help you get these skills to then grow and boost your business. Thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, can we please have the questions and then we'll address them? I'm not sure how we're going to handle um, the questions. Um, okay, it doesn't look like there are questions at the moment. In that case, um, we will end the session here. But if you do want to connect with us again, as I've mentioned, you can connect us connect with us on our social media platforms.